Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to Spalding Gymnasium here at the campus of Keene State College. I'm your host, Logan Peranto, joined with JJ LeBlanc, bringing you the, this first round matchup of the NCAA Division III men's basketball tournament between the Jumbos of Tufts University and the pride of Widener University. And with this being the earliest scheduled game for this first round, JJ, what's your excitement level for this? Well, it's an honor to be able to commentate on this game. It's the first game of the, the Division III NCAA tournament. Two really great teams that have had really great years, and I'm just ready to get into it. Yes, me too. And let's take a moment to look at how each of these teams got here. First, for the Jumbos of Tufts coming out of Medford, Massachusetts. They were solid all year in a tough NESCAC conference, having a 6-4 and four regular season before getting stopped by the eventual champions, Hamilton, in the semifinals of the tournament. That 6-4 and four record added to their 19-7 and seven overall record with some notable out-of-conference wins coming against Babson, Emerson, Yeshiva, and Endicott, who are all solid Northeastern opponents. So, JJ, who are the guys to watch out for for Tufts in this game? Well, when I look at this team, Logan, I see a plethora of guys that can do a lot of damage in-game and a game out, and that starts with Dylan Thorner. He's a six foot six guard who averaged 15 points per game and had multiple impressive performances that included 28 points, five boards, and eight assists against Clark, 38 points against NESCAC opponent Wesleyan and another 30 point performance and a win in the quarterfinals against a very good Middlebury team. And what about some of those other guys that you mentioned? Well a couple of different guys that will look to make an impact in today's games are guys like Tyler Aronson who averages nine points a game, Carson Cohen who leads the team in assists, and then you got a couple of underclassmen and guys that add to the height with Truman Gettings and Bobby Stewart. And these jump rows from the sound of a JJ are a very deep team that can you know, make a run and has several options. But standing in front of them today is the Widener Pride out of Chester, Pennsylvania, who had a great regular season in the MAC Commonwealth Conference, finishing 11 and 5, earning them the two seed in the conference tournament, where they were able to beat both number three seeded Hood College in the semifinals, and then in the finals they beat number one seed Alvernia University, making their overall conference 19, or excuse me, overall record 19 and 8. Some out-of-conference games that Widener participated in was a great win against the Swarthmore team that is in this tournament this year. And then they hung around against then ranked number 6, Stockton, only losing by 11. This, that's another team we will see in the tournament. So, JJ, for Widener, who is it that is in your spotlight today? The Pride are led by three double-digit scorers, those being Dominic Dunn, who averages 18.8. Uh, 18.2 points per game at about 7 rebounds a game. Pat Holden who brings in 14 points a game. And finally, Kevin Schenk who averages 11 points a game. Behind him, these are guys like Stephen Matlack who averages 9.4 points a game. Kenny Lewis who leads the team in rebounding per game with just, with just over 8. These five guys are the starters for the Pride. And with them all being upperclassmen, I expect these five will play almost all of this entire game for Widener. Today's going to be a fun one as we open this Division Three men's tournament here in Keene, New Hampshire. Make sure you join us back in a couple of minutes for the National Anthem, starting lineups, and then the first ever meeting between these two schools. A single thread is unique, like each of us, full of purpose and potential. A strand designed to connect, strengthen, and unite. But we face different challenges and have different opportunities. By acknowledging that others may struggle in ways we do not, we can celebrate our differences, embrace each other, and fortify the ties among us. A single thread can fray, yet when it's woven with another, a bond forms a new strength created by the fabric of the whole. Let's embrace the fabric we make together, the diversity of our threads, to reach beyond ourselves and overcome the impossible. The true power of our game comes from unifying our individual backgrounds, connecting our unique stories, enabling us to be stronger, braver, greater. We can achieve so much more when we are all as one. What a season! 
season. The confetti is going to fall. Here she goes, and she's got it. How sweet is this, and how wonderful for the sport. Now, let's meet the starting lineups for this afternoon's game. At forward, for Wagner, a 6'4 graduate student from Baltimore, Maryland, number one, Kenny Lewis. At forward, for Tufts, the 6'8 sophomore from Boca Raton, Florida, number 21, Bobby Stewart.
And just to recap the starting lineups for each of these squads today before the tip-off. First for Tufts University, it's going to be number zero, Dylan Thorner. Number 10, Carson Cohen. Number 11, Tyler Aronson. Number 21, Bobby Stewart. And number 25, Truman Gennings. And for Widener, it's going to be number one, Kenny Lewis. Number 14, Pat Holden. Number 15, Stephen Matlack. Number 21, A.J. Sawyers. And number 44, Dominic Dunn. So, J.J., two teams that have never met before in either program's history. It should be a fun one, of course. As we mentioned before, this is the first game that will kick off this tournament. Just a lot of excitement in the air today. Yeah, a lot of excitement, and we got a big storyline today, too. Got a couple of guys. Um, Dylan Thorner needs 26 points to eclipse the 1,000 point mark. Shoots 51% from the floor, which is good for fourth in the conference. And you also have Tyler Aronson. He needs 17 points to reach the 1,000 point mark. So if we're lucky, we might be able to see two guys eclipse that mark today, Logan. Yeah, and what a moment would, that would be as Widener wins the tip and will have the first possession of this first round matchup. Drive to the hoop, it's Schenk. He misses it, rebound Gettings. Tufts is rolling out a big lineup right now. They have a bunch of guys that can shoot, got a guys that can get into the paint like that. This is again. Lewis now, Stewart on him, bounce is deflected and could not be corralled by Cohen so it will remain wide in her ball. Both teams trying to run and gun a little bit early, trying to get themselves open, trying to get some easy shots on the inside, but most of the shots for both teams just haven't been falling yet. It's going to be inbound. done now on the perimeter, swings, three pointer is up and it's good. It's Steven Matlack for three, and that's how this game opens up. Three point basket by Steven Matlack. Cohen. Now Thorner. Looking for the sophomore Bobby Stewart. Back to Thorner. Gettings now. Swings. Tyler Aronson. Aronson crosses, steps back. Now to Stewart. Back to Aronson. Swing. Carson Cohen for three, no good. See, that's good ball movement, but they're loading up on the right side of the court. Nobody really seems to be cutting to the left side, so that's something that they might have to work on. I believe it was Gettings and Cohen in similar spots right in front of Widener's bench. You're right, JJ. Not the best floor spacing for Tufts early. That's an easy fix, though, especially when they've been playing good defense on this side. They might have let up an easy three, but just as long as they understand what they're doing down low. See, that's good defense and a block. Holden's three ball is up, and it's good. Pat Holden, his first basket of the game. You know, the sophomore Stewart for being able to get the block up, keeping it in bounds like that. Storner to Stewart. Good help defense from Lewis. Loose ball. We're going to get a blocking foul. Widener thought they had a steal. It's going to go against number 15, Stephen Matlack, his first. Thorner will inbound right next to the Pride bench. Finds Cohen. Cohen to Gettings. Great defense. Holden the other way will pull up. Short. Rebound. Tufts. They had the best shot you want to get in that situation because there were some guys that were left behind. That's a good shot right there. Aaron's th Aronson's three balls. No good. Now it's Schenk. Bounce pass to Lewis. Lewis will take the jumper. No good. Rebound. Schenk. Could not finish. And here come the Jumbos. Still scoreless. Aronson. Bounce to Gettings. Gettings. Cohen now in front of Widener's bench. Now drives with his left. Cohen puts it in. That's a pretty move there by Cohen. Carson Cohen for two. Holden pushing the pace a little bit for the pride. Will find himself with it again. Great double team. 
Hold it again. Now to Lewis. Lewis drives against Thorner. going to be fouled. And Kenny Lewis will go to the line to shoot two. Widener has been doing a great job early being able to penetrate the paint. Uh, most of their points have come off of driving into the paint and throwing it out to the outside to get an easy three. And even when they go on the inside, they're going to double them on the inside because they don't want them to get going down low. But Widener has been doing a good job of not only getting to the line but shooting from three. First one is good from Kenny Lewis. We're going to see a couple of substitutions on the tough side. It'll be Dylan Horner and Bobby Stewart to take a seat for the likes of Theo Henry as well as I believe it's number 22 Casey McLaren. It's Early Lewis. Four point lead for Widener. Lewis could not get the second one to go. Aronson swings to Henry. Now to Gettings. Back out to Henry. Kick out Carson Cohen. 10 on the shot clock. The double comes. First shot from McLaren's no good. It widened her rebounds. Schenk swings. Here's Dominic Dunn. Ball finds Schenk again. Back to Dunn. Look at this ball movement. Lewis rebounds. Falling out of bounds. Harrison steals the pass. Tufts really likes to load up the right side. Aronson all the way to the hoop what is blocked. Block by Shank. Dominic Dunn for three. It's good. Dominic Dunn, the leading scorer for this Pride squad. Just over 18 points per game. Aronson bounce. It's Gettings again. Swing over to Cohen. McLaren wants it again. This time he'll connect. Lucky break there for Tufts just to be able to get the ball in the basket and need to stop the bleeding a little bit. Done. Now to Matlack. Good pass to Lewis who could not corral originally. Now he has his dribble stolen. And it's Tyler Aronson now kicks. Cohen's three is off. Getting down very has had very quick hands in the passing lanes down low. It's been single-handedly keeping them in this game so far. Schenk working against McLaren. Trying to post up. Pump fakes. Goes up. In and out. Could not get it to go. That was Schenk. Into the lane, McLaren finds Cohen. Baseline pass to Henry. Henry's three will air ball. Here comes Pat Holden. Holden. Foul's going to go against Casey Cohen. We're going to get a timeout on the floor. Widener leads this one early, 9 to 5. National Championships runs through NCAA.com. And whether you follow one college team or all of them, it's never been easier to get the content you want all in one place with live broadcasts of multiple championships across all divisions with exclusive access. This is your ticket to the NCAA tournament. And highlights for every single championship. Stay in the game all season long with NCAA.com, the home of college sports. And welcome back. Widener has a four-point lead just over five minutes into this game. And something I've noticed early, JJ, is the tough spacing. You know, they've they've had Aronson on, our, uh, on the left side wing trying to work it into Gettings. It hasn't really worked out. And then they've, they've settled for three-point jump shots early. And then on the Widener side, I've been impressed. They're not as scared to move the ball as we've seen. And uh, this is a upperclassmen loaded squad we see here for the Pride and they look very composed early. 
yeah, not only do they look very composed, their defense has been outstanding, one through five. They've been able to get into the passing lanes, they've been able to stop, get a double team going, and still have a man come out and stop them. Now, like you said, we were talking about this during the break, Tufts has been trying to get a two-man game going, but if they're not more creative with their passing and what they've been doing to try to score, they're just going to get destroyed down low with this wider defense that's just been outstanding so far. It's going to be Pat holding the inbound, gets it to Dunn, Dunn. Wanted the three-pointer over Dylan Thorner a bit too much. And Tufts will rebound. Thorner, three-pointer wide open and it's good. Dylan Thorner connects for his first basket of the game. It's crazy what good passing can get you. Ernest swung it over to Schenk. He puts it up and he puts it in. No. It'll be an offensive foul on Shank. Oh. I thought that was an M1 for a second. <laughs> there it is going to be an offensive foul against Kevin Shank. Now this is interesting. Seems, seems to me they're setting up a little bit of pressure. McLaren back to Henry. Henry steps back. Oh, no. Nice step to a move there from Theo Henry, and he gets the mid-ranger to connect. Gives it him the lead. What a pretty move. Swing over Pat Holden. Now to Dominic Dunn on the dribble. Free throw line fader. No good. Rebound Tufts. Thorner catch and shoot in transition. Short. It's going to go over the backboard. Wide in the ball. I worry about Tufts immediately coming down and shooting the three ball. That may have been something that's been working for them all season, but I believe we've seen it three times already where they've come down, not set up an offense, and just let it fly, and it's just not been working for them so far. Checking in for Tufts, number 20, Scott Jemisey. Holden now against Jemisey, works to his right, it's going to be blocked. That was Joshua Bernstein, the freshman. Thorner again from the same spot, short. Bernstein rebounds, kick, Theo Henry to his right, it's going to get bumped. Foul's going to go against Luke Mazor, his first. I'll be interested to see what Tufts has for an inbound play. McLaren. Theo Henry in front of Widener's bench, too much. That was Xavier Ernest with the rebound. Hand off to Dunn, working on his left. Now Schenk. Kevin Schenk trying to make his move. Now kicks to Dunn. We're going to get a foul against the Jumbos. Inbound and three pointers up and no good. A bit lucky there if you're Tufts. Yeah, they're just leaving them wide open. They're kind of daring them to shoot. Bernstein, the 6 11 freshman, now kicks to Henry. Thorner working to his left. Now it's Henry, dribble drive, gets in the paint. Mid range is good. Did you say 6 11 freshman? Yes, I what did. a weapon to have for your Tufts <laughs> University. Done. Working against Casey McLaren. McLaren gets a piece of it. It's going to stay wide in the ball. We're going to get another timeout on the floor. Tufts leads now 12 to 9. We'll be right back. Comprehensive learning is being able to adapt to experiences and apply the things that I learned. Being an athlete and juggling academics helped me grow as a person and things that I've learned, I was able to apply it in another field, putting them into everyday life. Developing comprehensive learning helped me prioritize certain things to make sure I get to where I wanna be. And we are back. 
Just about ready to restart action after the timeout. And not a lot of scoring, JJ. Um, seems like each team has, has gotten to know each other in this week that they've had in preparation. I know Widener's coach's coaching staff has been yelling out some of the things that Tufts wants to do in their sets offensively. And it's led to just a 12 to, 12 to 9 game, almost 9 minutes into this game. Well, first off, let me just say that Widener could not have been playing better defense throughout this game. They might only be down three right now, but if you're watching the game, you know that they're playing as hard as they possibly can right now. And if they keep this up, I, b I just believe that their defense is going to out-talent Tufts as this game goes on if they keep it up. They're, they have great ball movement, they have great passing, they have great shooting, even though they missed right there. But their shots are going to fall, so I don't think they should worry about it. I just like what I'm seeing so far from Widener. Dominic Dunn. Empty-handed so far from three. Excuse me, he might have made one three-pointer. He is a uh, season average of 39% from the three-point arc, so he's going to confidently shoot all game. So we see, see a great take there from Dylan Thorner. He finishes at the rim. Another three-pointer miss there for the Pride. Just a waste of a possession there as Theo Henry thought he could find Bernstein in transition. Sailed it over his head and now Widener will get the ball right back. I like that look that the coach gave his player after Henry threw the pass. He was just like, no, don't do that. Mazur gets the screen from Dunn. Dominic Dunn now dribble handoff to Matlack. Matlack full head of steam, great pass, and a good finish from Kenny Lewis. Matlack, he might be long, but he's very quick. He's able to get a nice pass down low. I didn't even really see that pass coming. Doubling at the half court. That's where you want the ball if you're wide or a good steal from Mazur. Gets it up, and a great finish. Widener has now taken the lead, 14 to 13, with a little bit more than 10 minutes left in the first half. He got the trap and the steal. Here comes Tufts again. Good defense from Kenny Lewis. Swing, three balls up, and it's good. Good shot. That's Kai Champion, fresh end of the game. First shot is good from him. Crossover from Matlack, now kicks. Three-pointer, Missouri, no good. Rebound, Bernstein. Thorner to Cohen. Back to Champion. Champion will set something up against the zone look from the Pride. Bounce to Bernstein. Bernstein, great pass to Cohen. Floats one up and it's good. That's Carson Cohen. The senior, it's his second basket of the game. Kenny Lewis. Missouri drives. Good pass. And it's an M1 for Kenny Lewis. Finds himself with a couple of baskets in the past couple of minutes. I like the passing lane, the, the passing game with Lewis in the middle. They don't want him on the perimeter. They want him to pass. They want to pass it down to him in the middle, and he can try to find someone on the outside. And if they pass it back to him on the inside, he's athletic enough to where he can at least try to go in and get a foul. And in this case, he was able to get the end one. So good job by number one. They would complete it too. Tyler Aronson and Bobby Stewart are back into this game for the Jumbos. They're just going to put Ty, or excuse me, Bobby Stewart right in the middle of this press. Nice pass. And Stewart. Complete it. Oh. This ball, and it's going to be a jump ball. It's going to stay Tufts ball. But if you're Bobby Stewart, that's a, that's a shot you've got to finish with the left hand. Could not get it to go. Fortunately for the jumbos, they will have another possession after the jump ball. Steven Matlock. Absolutely slammed his head on the ground going for the ball in that play. He looks a, bit, a little bit shaken up and able to stay in the game. Hand off, it's Aronson. Aronson thought about it, now swings. Floaters up, and it's no good. Holden. 
Pass it back over. Bright. That fouls on Giamessi, his first. We'll see Dominic Dunn take a seat for Widener. And Kevin Schenk back into the game. And then for the Jumbos, it's Casey McLaren back into the game. Holden gets the screen from Matlack. Loses his dribble for a second, regains it. Ten on the shot clock. Lewis handoff, Holden. Holden for three. Cannot get it to go. Rebound, Schenk. Matlack drives, spins. Gets all the way. And a good block by McLaren. McLaren, excuse me. Kick, Holden, another three. That one's good. Pat Holden from the corner. Pat Holden for three. Cohen to champion. Bobby Stewart now to Cohen. Cohen, too much. We're going to get another timeout on the floor. This game is dotted up at 19 apiece. Make sure to stay with us. To them, the whole world looks like an opportunity. One to be seized, built upon, and made better for their sport and the people around it. To student athletes, every opportunity is a chance to change what could be and show the world what opportunity can do. And we are back, just about ready to restart action after the Pats holding three-point shot that tied this game up. And so far, JJ, no team has really been able to pull ahead. Yeah, but there's been great defense on both sides. A little bit more on Widener's part, in my opinion, but Tufts has been able to get themselves back into the game with some gritty defense on the other end. Especially with their bigs down low, they've been able to get some good blocks on Widener. And they've been able to make them work on the perimeter. Here we go. The Widener Pride will have possession here, trying to take a lead. Kevin Schenk, good nice pass. pass. Kenny Lewis goes up and is fouled. That's going to be there all night if you're Widener. If you're quick enough and you have guys that can get to the middle, like Holden, or you have guys like Matlack who are really quick as they drive more to the middle or they drive to the outside, they're going to make you think that you have to double team them as they go to the basket. And you'll have a guy like Lewis who's really athletic who will either get fouled when, he sh when he's going up or he'll make it and still get fouled, go to the line. And Lewis is good on the first one and that foul was against Carson Cohen it's going to be his second and he will take a seat for the likes of Theo Henry also into the game for the tough jumbos is Truman Gettings Lewis empty headed or excuse me one for two from the line giving the Widener Pride a one point lead as we approach seven minutes left in this first half. Henry, now to Aronson. That's Aronson is doubled. Swing, McLaren in the corner, in and out. See, that's a risk you, you run if you're a widener. There's always gonna be someone wide open. They just happen to miss the shot that time. Matlack, swing, shank with Gettings on him. And a foul is called against Truman Gettings. And that'll send Kevin Schenk to the line to shoot two. We're gonna see Dominic Dunn back into the game for Widener. Tufts with seven fouls already. Shanks, first of the one and one is too much. Henry, Good finds Aronson, 
Aronson for three, no good. Rebound, Gettings, foul on the floor. It's going to go against Dominic Dunn. It's going to be his first. Both teams not shooting the ball particularly well right now from the field, both under 35%. With Tuff shooting 32 and Widener shooting 30.4. It'll stay tough possession with 17 seconds left on the shot clock. And Widener's entire bench thought, <laughs> thought it came off the foot of Gettings there. Ref saw otherwise. And now Gettings with it again. Trying to get, go get going is Trubin Gettings. And he'll get going to the free throw line for two. Foul is going to be on number 21, Kevin Schenk, his second. 624 remaining in the first half with Widener leading by one. First one is no good from Truman Gettings. Bobby Stewart will take a seat for the Jumbos. We'll see Joshua Bur excuse me, Bernstein check in for him. Getting second one is good. We're tied back, tied again, this time at 20 apiece. Matlack, good help from McLaren. Trying to find Pat Holden in the corner. Holden to Lewis, back to Holden. Now drives against Theo Henry. Holden's pass is Deflected by Aronson and stolen by Henry. And here come the Tufts. Jumbos. Layup is no good. Rebound Bernstein. Loose ball. Bernstein again. Theo Henry for three. And it's good. Good job of by Joshua Bernstein to stick with the play. Found the loose ball and found the open shooter. And Theo Henry. Done. To the corner, it's Holden. Holden. Now to Kenny Lewis, who's going to be fouled on the floor. But we'll shoot the one and one. Foul's going to go against Joshua Bernstein, his first. Kenny Lewis with this has the opportunity to be the leading scorer on the floor right now. If he makes this next one, he'll be at eight. Line, Kenny Lewis. My mistake, he's already at eight. He is now the leading scorer on the floor right now. Leading scorer for Widener. Shoots the second and hits it. Checking in for the try, number 10, Miles Bright. See Miles Bright back into the game. Giving Kevin Schenk a bit of rest. Aronson's pass is going to come off the foot of Matlack. Inbound to Theo Henry. Henry finds Gettings at the free throw line. And the Pride are going to be called for a foul. It's going to go on Miles Bright. Pride foul, number 10, Miles Bright. That's his first. Bright's first foul comes into the game. It'll be the team six. 5.09 remaining in the first half. Henry trying to drive baseline. Now finds Bernstein. Bernstein tries to spin, loses it, but finds himself with the ball. and. Offensive foul. And that was Matt Lack who caught an elbow from Casey McLaren and draws the offensive foul. Matt Lack's even on the floor right now. It'll be done. We'll throw it into Holden. Coach Linton for the Jumbos is talking to the ref right now. It's 
going to be McLaren second as he defends Pat Holden on this possession. But it's Dominic Dunn with it now against Aronson. Dunn steps back, fades, no good. Matlack rebounds, elbow jumper short. Joshua Bernstein rebounds. Theo Henry now to Truman Gettings. Gettings to McLaren. Post entry to Bernstein. Kick to Henry. Henry spins. Tries to go up. Deflected by oh, Lewis. What a pass from behind the back. On the inside to Bernstein. My goodness. What a pass from Henry. That's the freshman's first basket of the game. And what a basket to get. My goodness. Holden with his left steps back. Now loses his footing. Able to get the pass off to Steven Matlack, whose three pointer is no good. Henry. Kick to Aronson. Aronson. Good pass to Joshua Bernstein, who's going to go to the line. Foul's going to go against Dominic Dunn, his second. We're going to have two Joshua Bernstein free throws when we come back from the media timeout. Tufts leads 25 to 22. Stay with us. And welcome back. Joshua Bernstein will have two free throws after this timeout, but I'm going to go back to his first basket. That was about 30 seconds ago and on the poster dunk. We saw, I believe it was Theo Henry, lose the ball in the paint, but he gathered the loose ball and kind of just threw it over his shoulder to Bernstein, who was able to collect and, and slam it home. But what a pass from Theo Henry it was. Oh, absolutely. And I wanted to take one minute to kind of talk about something that I think is kind of glaring in this game. Even though Tufts is only out rebounding Widener, 22 to 16, that is going to get bigger. The thing about Tufts is not only do they have great athletes, but they also have really tall athletes. People that can run the floor, people that can handle the ball, they're a little bit taller than the normal guards and wing players that we see today in D3 college basketball. So good on them for actually getting boards and using their height to their advantage. Bernstein, part of that height for Tufts, able to drill his first of two free throws. Bernstein, a very good passer from out of the post from what I've been seeing, able to find the open man when he's trying to go down Main Street, finds himself in some traffic. His second one, however, is a bit too much off the back rim. Steven Matlack trying to get to the rim. Against two, he fades. Can't get it to go. Rebound, Bernstein. Henry. Skip pass to Thorner. Back to Henry. Bernstein on the perimeter. Looking for the handoff for Aronson. Fakes it. Bernstein. It's going to be called for the offensive foul. In good defense there from Kenny Lewis. Bernstein's second foul of the game with a little bit more than three minutes remaining in the first half. Holden. Dribbles with his right now against Gettings. Tried to go up for the jump shot, but Gettings stole away. Now it's Thorner to Aronson. Looking for Gettings. Gettings now to Bernstein. Bernstein kicks. Henry for three. In and out. Rebound. Tufts. And we're going to get a foul on the floor. It's going to go against Miles Bright. Five-year foul. Number 10. Miles Bright. That's his second. Team seven. Bernstein's going to take a seat after some effective minutes.
Gettings first of the one and one is good. Giving Tufts a five point lead. Getting second is no good. Pat Holden is going to walk it up the court. We're going to see a 3 2 look now from the Jumbos. Matlack, bounce Lewis. Kenny Lewis now to Bright. Bright drives, good pass. And it's Xavier Ernest gets his first basket of the game. That's just good basketball. Aronson fades. Shot is short. Loose ball collected by Theo Henry. Henry drives baseline. Reverse, no good. Rebound again by the Jumbos. And another foul against Widener. This one's going to go against Xavier Ernest. We're getting a free throw violation on the shooter. Went a little bit too early. Now it's wide in her ball. Try to get some subs in. And by subs, I just mean Dominic Dunn. We'll pass the ball in to Holden. Holden doesn't seem to have a lot of fear. He loves driving into the middle. A lot, a lot of guys like that at that size going up against big guys like the guys in the Jumbos really wouldn't want to do something like that. Dominic Dunn's free throw line jumper is no good. And Aronson with it. Now swings to Henry. Theo Henry with a minute and a half on the game clock. Drives to his right, now kicks. Three balls up and it's good. That's Scott just <laughs> Keep messy. So we see the swing from wide or now it's holding. Now Matlack trying to work against Holden loses his dribble and it's stolen away by the Jumbos in transition. Layup oh, is no good. <laughs> Dart almost hit it into his own basket. And hold it now. Trying to get a good shot on what may be Widener's last possession of this first half. So settling for the two for one, they're going to try to get a good shot early and then just try to hold it on the other side. Maybe try to get a good three opportunity. And it's Dominic Dunn now who takes the baseline jumper and he hits. Just Dominic Dunn's second basket of the first half. Shot clock's off and they get a two out of it. Now the Jumbos are going to try to do the same thing with Theo Henry, now it's Gettings. Hand off Aronson, now 10. Thorner will take the three, too long. Miles Bright rebounds with five. Now with three, you pull up at the elbow, and he gets it to go. A good way to end the first half for the wider of Pride, who now trail by just two. Score is Tufts 30, Widener 28. Make sure to join us back in about 15 minutes for second half action. I pledge, I pledge, I pledge. I am an NCAA student athlete. And I pledge to be a champion of unity on my team, on my campus, and in my community. I pledge to embrace differences and strive for inclusion and collaboration. I pledge to stand against racism, hate, and discrimination. I pledge to strive for love, care, and forgiveness. I pledge to stand against silence, deceit, and obscurity. I pledge to strive for dialogue, truth, and understanding. I pledge to stand against fear and doubt. I pledge to strive for trust and belief in one another. I pledge to stand against complacency and stagnancy. I pledge to strive for change and growth. I commit to supporting my fellow student athletes in all circumstances that impact them. I commit to both choosing unity personally and encouraging it for all. I pledge these things because we are stronger together. United, United as, as one. one.
a single thread is unique. Like each of us, full of purpose and potential. A strand designed to connect, strengthen, and unite. But we face different challenges and have different opportunities. By acknowledging that others may struggle in ways we do not, we can celebrate our differences, embrace each other, and fortify the ties among us. A single thread can fray, yet when it's woven with another, a bond forms. A new strength created by the fabric of the whole Let's embrace the fabric we make together, the diversity of our threads, to reach beyond ourselves and overcome the impossible. The true power of our game comes from unifying our individual backgrounds, connecting our unique stories, enabling us to be stronger, braver, greater. We can achieve so much more when we are all as one. It's going to fall. Here she goes, and she's got it. How sweet is this, and how wonderful for the sport. Proportion to me is the lived experience of our Division III student athletes. They balance life from an academic perspective and the rigors of competing at a high level, bonding with teammates and building lifelong friendships. But they also are involved in their communities. They work jobs and internships and volunteer. They've learned to be resilient. Diverse experiences are setting them up for the future. Passion's love. Passion is love for what you do. Because I think when you face challenges, it comes down to how much you want it and how much you love it. Passion is what keeps you going forward. Seeing so many people that were like-minded and so hardworking in their sport and academics, being surrounded by like-minded people makes you want to be more passionate. I think it pushes you to a, a different level that maybe you didn't think you had. You can do the best of both worlds and love all of it. A good citizen is someone who wants to make a positive impact both in their communities and in the world around them. The Division III approach is absolutely the best approach out there for amateur sport because it wants student athletes to explore all parts of who they are. Be successful in the classroom, be successful in competition, be successful in the community. So our student athletes learn what it means to strive for and attain success, but doing it the right way and being good citizens. Comprehensive learning is being able to adapt to experiences and apply the things that I learned. Being an athlete and juggling academics helped me grow as a person and things that I've learned, I was able to apply it in another field, putting them into everyday life. Developing comprehensive learning helped me prioritize certain things to make sure I get to where I wanna be. Responsibility is being accountable for your words and actions, first and foremost. It also is an obligation to be a positive influence in the communities around you. Being in a D3 program, you're gonna have lots of different opportunities. You're not just an athlete, you're also involved in student life. Your academics are extremely important. We give a lot of our student athletes responsibilities right from the start by giving them leadership opportunities, by having them engage in the community, be a positive influence. That's being a responsible person. I believe sportsmanship is a it's a mutual admiration and respect for your fellow competitors. We all go through a lot to reach the point where we compete against one another. It's important to realize that. So once we're finally on the field or on the court or on the starting block, we look at each other as fellow human beings and not just competitors. Being able to recognize the hard work that other athletes are putting in creates a more positive and inclusive environment. to national championships runs through NCAA.com. And whether you follow one college team 
or all of them. It's never been easier to get the content you want all in one place with live broadcasts of multiple championships across all divisions with exclusive access. This is your ticket to the NCAA tournament. And highlights for every single championship. Stay in the game all season long with NCAA.com, the home of college sports. Pay attention. Welcome to Fandom 101. We'll cover the tools of the trade from foam fingers in the wave to the super secret wave. How's that for a course description? Lesson one, your game starts long before the opening whistle, so arrive prepared. Two, if something piques your interest, raise your hand. And three, work in groups. NCAA championships, attendance is encouraged. Passion is mandatory. Get your seats today at NCAA.com slash tickets. Class dismissed. College sports fans, get ready for game day with officially licensed merchandise from the NCAA official online shop, NCAA.com slash shop. Get the whole family geared up with the best collection of apparel and accessories, including t-shirts, sweatshirts, headwear, championship gear, and more. Visit the NCAA shop for today's special offer and rep your favorite team now. Only at NCAA.com slash shop. Passion is love. Passion is love for what you do. Because I think when you face challenges, it comes down to how much you want it and how much you love it. Passion is what keeps you going forward. Seeing so many people that were like-minded and so hardworking in their sport and academics, being surrounded by like-minded people makes you want to be more passionate. I think it pushes you to a, a different level that maybe you didn't think you had. And you can do the best of both worlds and love all of it. Comprehensive learning is being able to adapt to experiences and apply the things that I learned. Being an athlete and juggling academics helped me grow as a person and things that I've learned, I was able to apply it in another field, putting them into everyday life. Developing comprehensive learning helped me prioritize certain things to make sure I get to where I want to be. NCAA and its member schools offer nearly half a million college athletes a path to go pro in something other than sports. Learn more at NCAA.org. Responsibility is being accountable for your words and actions, first and foremost. It also is an obligation to be a positive influence in the communities around you. Being in a D3 program, you're gonna have lots of different opportunities. You're not just an athlete, you're also involved in student life. Your academics are extremely important. We give a lot of our student athletes responsibilities right from the start by giving them leadership opportunities, by having them engage in the community, be a positive influence. That's being a responsible person. To them, the whole world looks like an opportunity, one to be seized, built upon, and made better for their sport and the people around it. To student athletes, every opportunity is a chance to change what could be and show the world what opportunity can do. Being a part of the different activities and organizations that I've been a part of, I'm actually able to see myself where I'm like, hey, I actually can make a change. I'm one person that can make a difference. Division three has helped me to develop teamwork skills, critical thinking skills, time management skills. It's not just about basketball or it's not just about school. It's about developing yourself as a person altogether.
I believe sportsmanship is a, it's a mutual admiration and respect for your fellow competitors. We all go through a lot to reach the point where we compete against one another. It's important to realize that. So once we're finally on the field or on the court or on the starting block, we look at each other as fellow human beings and not just competitors. Being able to recognize the hard work that other athletes are putting in creates a more positive and inclusive environment. Responsibility is being accountable for your words and actions, first and foremost. It also is an obligation to be a positive influence in the communities around you. Being in a D3 program, you're gonna have lots of different opportunities. You're not just an athlete, you're also involved in student life. Your academics are extremely important. We give a lot of our student athletes responsibilities right from the start by giving them leadership opportunities, by having them engage in the community, be a positive influence, that's being a responsible person. A single thread is unique, like each of us, full of purpose and potential. A strand designed to connect, strengthen, and unite. But we face different challenges and have different opportunities. By acknowledging that others may struggle in ways we do not, we can celebrate our differences, embrace each other, and fortify the ties among us. A single thread can fray, yet when it's woven with another, a bond forms. A new strength created by the fabric of the whole. Let's embrace the fabric we make together, the diversity of our threads, to reach beyond ourselves and overcome the impossible the true power of our game comes from unifying our individual backgrounds, connecting our unique stories, enabling us to be stronger, braver, greater. We can achieve so much more when we are all as one. What a season. The confetti is going to fall. There she goes, and she's got it. And welcome back to this first round matchup between the Wide and the Pride and the Tufts Jumbos. Tufts leads by two. After one half, the score is 32-28. We're just going to look at some of the halftime stats. Each team shooting about 30% from the floor with Wide and at 32% and Tufts at 30%. So kind of struggling offense on the offensive end both of these teams are you know some of the guys that lead the way for scoring on both sides have struggled so far to get it going on the on tough side uh, Dylan Thorner only has five points so far in this game and then Tyler Aronson usually a nine points has nine points per game has zero after one half so guys like Theo Henry you know doesn't usually score for this team he has seven and leads the way right now for Tufts. So a couple of different looks, a couple of different guys doing the work scoring-wise for Tufts. And then for Wide Earner as well. Dominic Dunn and Pat Holden haven't really gotten it going. 11 points combined, but guys like Kenny Lewis already over his season average. He has nine and leads the entire game in scoring. So it's definitely been an interesting look for both of these teams. And I think, J.J., whichever one of these guys... Er, Whichever these one of these leading scores for either one of the teams, if they can get it going, you know, get some momentum for their side, it could look better for if they manage to do that. Well, if I was the coach for either one of these teams, you know what I would say to them, Logan? I would look them right in the eyes in the locker room and say, guys, if we don't go out here swinging, we're going to lose this game. I don't care if you're tough or if you're wider. If you don't come out swinging it during the second half or at the beginning of it, they're going to lose this game. We are going to see here which team wants it more, which team's going to come out and get what they need to get done in this moment. 
It all depends on who wants it more at this point. They're shooting basically the same way. The defense is basically the same. The scoring is basically the same. They're both shooting abysmally from the field. So we might as well just see who wants it more in this game. And that's the best basketball that you can get when both teams are desperate towards the end of the game. So let's just see who wants it more. First possession. A hand check is going to be called against Bobby Stewart. It's going to be his first of the game. No free rides to the basket. That's good on them. Done. Swing to Steven Matlack. Matlack now with it. Swing back to Holden. Done. Fades for three. Short. Rebound. Almost stolen away by Kenny Lewis. Good hustle from him there. Lewis, by far, has been the best player in this game on both sides of the ball and on both teams. He just he seems to want it the most. He's been scoring. He's been getting rebounds when he's supposed to. He's gotten some steals. No fouls yet for number one, so it's just good on him. Widener wanted a 10-second violation. Tufts took a little while to get it over half court, but instead we're going to get a Dylan Thorner three-pointer to open the second half scoring. As Dunn drives to the hoop, and he starts 0 for 2 from the 4 to start the second half. Tufts now in transition again. Reverse layup is good. And that's Carson Cohen. Carson Cohen. Schenk drives. Up fake. Can't get the layup to go. And again, Tufts in transition. The Jumbos have been pretty effective so far in this half in transition. Granted, it's only been a couple of plays, but they're doing much better than they did in the first half. I stand corrected. Aronson could not hold on to that one, and now Steven Matlack all the way to the rim. Gets the bucket. Aronson to Gettings. Truman Gettings bounces into Bobby Stewart, the sophomore, swings to Carson Cohen. Cohen now some good spacing, that's some good floor general type stuff, and a great three let out of it. But that is just awesome basketball from Carson Cohen, able to Tyler, able to see the play for what it was and send Aronson to the corner where he was able to hit him for the open three. Schenk on the other end. And we're getting a timeout called by the Widener Pride. Tufts leads by five, scores 37 to 32. Make sure to stay with us. NCAA and its member schools offer nearly half a million college athletes a path to go pro in something other than sports. Learn more at NCAA.org. Hey, welcome back, ladies and gentlemen. And with the five-point lead that Tufts has right now, we're going to turn your attention to Tufts head coach, Brandon Linton, who is in his second season as at the helm of this Tufts basketball program. He has had experience coaching both Division I and Division III. He had taken over Nich Nichols College, which is another college in Massachusetts, a Division III program. When he took over, they were already a good team, JJ. They had won their conference championship as well as advanced to the Elite Eight. And Coach Linton succeeded at the difficult challenge of keeping the team on the top. And now at Tufts in this tournament trying to get a win here today. Great on him for being a second year coach and already put in a situation where he can put his team in the tournament. He's able to play here at Keene State today. Oh no. Truman Gettings gets all the way up and slams it home. His first field goal of this game. Truman Gettings. See that. 
Widener made a business decision not to get in front of Gettings there. Probably good on them. On the other end, foul is going to call be called against Bobby Stewart. And Tufts, as we said earlier, did not win the NESCAC championship, but they got an at-large bid with a 19-H record coming into today's game. They also beat the other three opponents from the NESCAC tournament. That will feature in this tournament um, in Williams, Middlebury, and Hamilton. So obviously a tough conference NESCAC is. Tufts played a good schedule. Able to get some wins that we talked about earlier. It's Tyler Aronson has seen the ball go in a couple of times for him. Having zero points after one half now, already has six in this second half. Schenk working against Thorner. Help comes in a block for Joshua Bernstein. That's great help defense from Bernstein. He's not that worried about the, his assignment that's on the other side because the way that Wider's been playing, you know he's not going to pass it when he goes down to the paint. So as long as he's there, he was able to get a nice block on him. So great Missouri. job from Bernstein. Missouri fresh into the game. Kicks for Dominic Dunn. Who cannot hit from three? Now Aronson the other way. Trying to find Bernstein with the size advantage. Joshua Bernstein. A good move and a finish with the right hand. Joshua Bernstein for two. Lewis on the baseline. It's going to get tied up with that jump ball. Tufts will have possession, but first a timeout on the floor. The Tufts University Jumbos lead 43-32. to We'll be right back. Responsibility is being accountable for your words and actions, first and foremost. It also is an obligation to be a positive influence in the communities around you. Being in a D3 program, you're going to have lots of different opportunities. You're not just an athlete, you're also involved in student life. Your academics are extremely important. We give a lot of our student athletes responsibilities right from the start by giving them leadership opportunities, by having them engage in the community, being a positive influence. That's being a responsible person. And welcome back. Tufts has been able to extend their lead in this second half so far, outscoring Widener 8-4. Or excuse me, 13-4 early on. And it's been a lot. We saw in the transition and in half-court sets, we've seen Joshua Bernstein have the most recent basket. They found him, used his size to their advantage. And then Tyler Aronson, who's hit a couple of threes early in the second half as well. So I found their guys that they know can provide easy buckets for them, and they have so far. And Widener just hasn't been able to get it going offensively, missing a couple of shots. Dominic Dunn scoreless so far in the second half after a few jump shots taken. Well, Tufts has also been doing a great job of getting – of having their big guys eat. They've been giving the kind of at the top of the key because they're mobile enough to drive down to the basket. And even if they don't have anything, they can't get anything going, they're such good passers out of the post that they can get somebody to, they can at least reset it or they can get somebody out there for the open three. It's Carson Cohen driving with his left. Now kicks for McLaren with one second on the shot clock. Casey McLaren, nothing but net from three. Done with his right. Hands off to Shank. Shank swings. Now it's Holden. Lewis to Missouri. Missouri with the bigger Bernstein on him. Goes right by him. Now kicks. Swing to Dominic Dunn. And his three pointer is going to be blocked by Casey McLaren. McLaren getting it done on both sides of the court. Balls with Casey Cohen, or excuse me, Carson Cohen. Thorner with his left, can't get it to go. Joshua Bernstein cleans it up. 
We're going to get timeouts from Tufts as they lead now by 16, 48 to 32. We'll be right back. To them, the whole world looks like an opportunity, one to be seized, built upon, and made better for their sport and the people around it. To student athletes, every opportunity is a chance to change what could be and show the world what opportunity can do. And welcome back. Just about ready for the restart of this one after the timeout from Tufts. It's going to be Pat Holden to bring it down for the Pride. Holden right in front of his own bench. Bounces to Dominic Dunn. Kenny Lewis back to Dunn. Dunn steps back and fades, and it's good. Dominic Dunn's first basket of this second half. It's a good way to come back into it if you're a widener, just trying to get a quick bucket, maybe try to get everyone else involved. Try to get back into the swing of things, try to find a rhythm. Thorner's three, no good. Rebound, Josh Bernstein. Ball's moving now for Tufts. Hand off Thorner, back to Aronson. Looking for the big man, Bernstein. Bernstein cannot get it to go. And here come the pride with Pat Holden. Holden the shank, shank for three, no good. Rebound, Dominic Dunn. Missouri's three is good, nothing but net. And five points now in a row for Widener. McLaren, one dribble, pulls it in. It's good, we saw him hit a three-pointer from that same spot just a couple minutes ago. Off-ball foul is going to go against Tyler Aronson. This is his first foul of the game. Shank. Kick. Missouri for three. Too much. Rebound Joshua Bernstein. Aronson now in transition. Finds McLaren. One dribble. And again, Casey McLaren from the right wing. And that's his third three of the second half. Got to find a way of stopping him. It starts down in the corner. They pass him the ball. He comes out of the corner, does a little dribble move, and gets to that spot. They have to find a way to get rid of that. Casey, or Kenny Lewis on the other end finishes the layup. Aronson. Now Theo Henry. Henry. Skip to McLaren. Back to Henry in the Bernstein. And a great post entry. Kenny Lewis fouls. Cannot connect on the first. Champion comes into the game for Tufts University. Bernstein's second is also no good. We're going to get a foul against Tufts. That'll be against... You messy. Team's fourth. 
Mazur. Now Lewis hand off to Bright. Bright trying to drive with his left. Now finds Dunn in the corner. Dominic Dunn. Kick to Mazur. Mazur catch and shoot for three is short. Rebound Kenny Lewis who goes up and can't finish. But Mazur with the rebound again. Who steps back now for three. That's Luke Mazur's second three of this first or second half. Two very big threes by Mazur. Able to keep them within 12. Champion. Now to Henry. Back to Champion. He already hit one and he does again. Matches the three pointer on the other end. Shank loses his dribble, and here come Tufts in transition, and Champion could not corral the pass from McLaren. Done. Lewis, wide open. Kenny Lewis. Kenny Lewis has 13 now for the Pride. The corner again, McLaren. Inside Bernstein, tries to put it up and does. Modern Spence wanted to travel. Done. It's going to be fouled on the floor by Theo Henry. We're going to see Stephen Matlick check in after the immediate timeout. Tufts leads by 15, up 59 44. Stay with us. I believe sportsmanship is a, it's a mutual admiration and respect for your fellow competitors. We all go through a lot to reach the point where we compete against one another. It's important to realize that. So once we're finally on the field or on the court or on the starting block, we look at each other as fellow human beings and not just competitors. Being able to recognize the hard work that other athletes are putting in creates a more positive and inclusive environment. And welcome back before we restart action. Just going to turn your attention to Weiner Pride's head coach, Chris Caridio. Caridio, Caridio is in his 17th season as the men's basketball coach and serves as the assistant athletic director at Widener this year. He was able to lead his team to a, a good 19 and eight record of course we mentioned 11 and 5 in the mac commonwealth conference where he was able to win head coach of the year so congratulations to him for winning that award this year and leading his squad to the ncaa tournament hey and it says a lot about a coach whose team some teams at this point even if you're in the tournament might not even try to come back or put up a fight but they've been able to keep it semi-close with a couple of big threes down the stretch. And he just knows wh when to put his guys and right there have another three. Steven Matlack's three is no good. Another offensive rebound. Lewis in a crowd, can't get it to go. Bobby Stewart with his left hand hands it to champion. Widener in a zone look defensively right now. Bobby Stewart against Dominic Dunn. Great pass and a great finish. That's Truman Gettings from Bobby Stewart. Truman Gettings for two. Matlack with his left is going to be fouled. Foul is going to go against number four, Theo Henry. Right. Kick Missouri for three. Short. Rebound. Kenny Lewis. Lewis now kicks to Dunn. Dunn. Finds Bright in the corner. He'll drive. And we're going the other way. 
It was Carson Cohen who got in front of Brights right before he passed it and drew the offensive foul against him. Thorner from in front of his bench. Shot is no good. Ball is going to come off the foot of Dunn. And Tufts will have the ball. Remember when I said earlier that whichever coach is in the locker room and says whoever wants it more is going to have it? Well, in the first half, Tufts shot 30.6% from the field. And in this half, they're shooting over 75% from the field. So they must have woken up in the locker room. Oh, when he misses the dunk. That nice. double screen against the zone. Gettings on the backside wanted the alley oop, but almost, he almost got it. Could not put it down. Would have been a nice set of room service at Keen. Matt Lex stepped out, but you're right, JJ. And only 30 points for Tufts in the first half, and now already 31 points in the second half for Tufts. And we're not even 12 minutes into the second half so far, so. And like you said, very efficient. 75% from the field is no joke. And it's not only that, they're shooting, well now they're shooting 72% from the field, but they're shooting 71.4% from three. They're doing a great job in the second half. Just been able to put the ball in the basket. It's less about what Widener's gonna do on defense and what Tufts is gonna do offensively. They set a lot of screens, they know how to get guys open. They're not crowding up the floor as much and even when they are, there's guys like McLaren that are just getting easy threes down the stretch. And they're playing very well in transition like they are right now. Aronson for three. An impressive stuff there in transition even though Aronson did not get it to fall. It seemed like Carson Cohen was losing his footing, kind of just slung it to the corner. But we're going to get a timeout on the floor. Tufts up by 17, 61 to 44. We'll be right back. Passion's love. Passion is love for what you do. Because I think when you face challenges, it comes down to how much you want it and how much you love it. Passion is what keeps you going forward. Seeing so many people that were like-minded and so hardworking in their sport and academics, being surrounded by like-minded people makes you want to be more passionate. I think it pushes you to a, a different level that maybe you didn't think you had. And you can do the best of both worlds and love all of it. Before we restart action with Tufts up 17. We're going to tease the next game. It's going to be the host, Keen State, against the Baruch Bearcats. Excuse me, that's the Baruch Bearcats. And uh, Coach Ryan Kane, of course, watching this one, getting his guys ready for that matchup at 5.30. Inbound is almost taken away by Steven Matlick. Inbound now to Cohen. Cohen trying to find Aronson on the back door. Could not, and it's going to go out of bounds. Pride ball. And off to Dunn against Thorner. Done. Fades. Can't hit. Matlack recovers. Done. Catch and shoot. It's good. And that was smooth from Dominic Dunn. That shot puts him in double digits. He now has 10. And Aronson's going to be called for a travel. Holden. Holden again in the corner, one of the three, it's blocked. Gettings will rebound. 
The Jumbos also do a really good job of blocking the ball and keeping it in bounds and not just sending it out of bounds like other teams have. Cohen for three. Short rebound. Dylan Thorner near half court now drives and it's blocked nice off the backboard. Nice play by Steven Matlek. Miles Bright the other way. Good pass. Steven Matlek wide open. Hesitated but hits. And now this is just an 11 point lead for the Tufts Jumbos. Steven Matlek for three. Aronson. Good move to get by Dunn. Now swings over to Cohen. That was risky. That could have almost been a backcourt violation if he wasn't careful. All the way down to 10 on the shot clock now. Thorner. Kick to Cohen. Five. Cohen. Swing. Thorner is open. Can't get it to go. Rebound Joshua Bernstein. But his layup is no good. Loose ball is going to be deflected off. Bernstein. And it's going to go. It's going to be pride ball. Don't shovel dirt on him yet, boys. Ever since... Jettings missed that dunk. We've, they, the Jumbos have been kind of at a standstill with their offense, and Widener's been clawing back. Holden works to his left against Aronson, now bounces to Miles Bright, full head of steam. Can't finish. And the Tufts rebound. McLaren pump fakes. Now hands to Cohen. Thorner to Stewart. Trying to get it back to Thorner and the pride steal. Miles Bright to Dunn. Dunn goes up. Oh, that's and an it, offensive foul. My goodness. Cole is going to go against Dominic Dunn as he went up for the layup in transition. Offensive foul. Kind of a bang bang call there. That call honestly could have gone both ways. It was good offense and good defense. It's just about what the ref wanted. McLaren to Aronson. Aronson again. Bounce to Bobby Stewart. Good backdoor cut from Cohen. Now kicks McLaren again. Can't get that one to go. That's a nicely drawn up play. Try to get him open in the corner because he's got to defend down low. Lewis handoff, Holden, another handoff to Bright. Dunn with Casey McLaren on him. Dunn with his left, Rever er, turns, puts one up, can't finish. Kenny Lewis now will go to the line. Stewart says his hands are straight up and the refs just don't agree with him. Kenny Lewis has an opportunity here to make it a single digit lead for the Jumbos. First one is up and it's good. Ball's taken away. Kenny Lewis, he misses it. My goodness, he just couldn't finish it. That's tough there if you're widening there. You get the steal, three on one. Just could not convert on the layup. You're just going to have a short memory. That's something that can deflate a team if you're not careful. Bernstein. Ted on the shot clock now. Trying to find Theo Henry. Just could not. Corral the pass and it's going to go out of bounds. That's a good break there if you're Widener. And the Widener crowd is getting into it. They understand what's going on. Four minutes remaining in the second half. A couple of threes here, a couple of easy buckets, maybe some and ones. They're right back in it. And it's done. Gets the screen from Lewis. Now pulls up, misses it. Kenny Lewis offensive rebound. Lewis kicks to Bright now. Holden open for three. Oh, 
In and out. Fouls on the floor. It's going to stay right here. I believe that foul is going to go against Joshua Bernstein. And it is. Kenny Lewis has been relentless on the boards, especially the offensive boards tonight for Widener. Tufts leads by 10, 61 to 51. Just under four minutes remaining. Make sure to stay with us. Welcome to Fandom 101. We'll cover the tools of the trade from foam fingers in the wave to the super secret wave. How's that for a course description? Lesson one, your game starts long before the opening whistle, so arrive prepared. Two, if something piques your interest, raise your hand. And three, work in groups. NCAA championships, attendance is encouraged. Passion is mandatory. Get your seats today at NCAA.com slash tickets. Class dismissed. And we are just about ready to restart the action after the timeout. And Widener staying in this game, of course. For for a little bit, it seemed like tough, the Tufts would run away with it after shooting 75% from the field for most of this second half. But in the past three or four minutes, JJ, they've cooled down offensively, like you said, ever, ever since that alley-oop missed dunk from Gettings. The Jumbos really haven't gotten any shots to fall and Winder has this uh, this older group for Winder has stayed composed throughout and now has a chance to make it a, a single digit lead but they cannot you said something about it Logan <laughs> bounce to Aronson full court pressure from the pride Casey McLaren with it now's a good time if you're tough to take some time off the clock Henry, ball's going to come off the foot of Schenk and go out of bounds. Good job on Widener for making this a competitive game. They were down by a lot against a team that was red hot and they've slowly stormed back. Ernstein. And Pat Holden's going to be called for a foul as he came over to double Bernstein. Now I'm no scientist, but if you're if you're a guy like Pat Holden and you're that short, do you really think that you can foul a guy like Bernstein? I, me personally, I think that was a clean steal by Holden, and it does send Bernstein to the line to extend the lead to 11. Joshua Bernstein at the line. We'll see. We'll see. Steven Matlick check back into the game for Miles Bright. Bernstein converts on both free throws. And this is back up to a 12-point lead for Tufts. Holden against McLaren. Loses his footing, and they're going to say he's fouled by Casey McLaren. And that'll be a one-and-one one because they're in the bonus. Tufts University foul number 22, Casey McLaren. This is third in the team's ninth. Holden's first of the one and one is good. Clutch free throws here by Holden. Second is good as well. And back to a 10 point lead for the Jumbos. Aronson did not like what he saw. We're going to get a timeout on the floor from him. Exactly three minutes remaining. And still a 10 point lead for Tufts after those two free throws from Pat Holden. Very large turnover games for both teams. Total for the entire game with turnovers, Tufts has 12. 
and Widener has 10, both in double digits and turnovers. But it's also kept this kind of close. Tufts with six blocks to Widener's three. And also, here's something interesting. Tufts has 39 bench points to Widener's 12. So that has been a big part about what has kept Tufts in this game because their bench has been scoring machines, especially later in the game, and they've stepped up big time for their school here in the tournament. And it was like you said in the pregame, JJ, there's a plethora of guys for this Jumbo's team that can produce points. And right now, off the bench, like you said, they do have 31 points. And it's led by Casey McLaren with 12. I believe those coming on all three pointers. Three in this second half. So he's been huge for this tough squad. And McLaren has hit them all basically from the same place, the top right wing over on this side of the floor. Now Bernstein finds Thorner, and that's an easy two, and he gets, he's going to go to the line to try to convert the and one. McLaren's going to re-enter the game for Tufts as Dylan Thorner tries to convert the end one. It's good. Hold it going to draw the foul and he's going to go to the line shooting two as Widener finds themselves in the double bonus first one is good from Pat Holden that's his eighth point of the night And Holden is good on both. Henry almost fell there. Maybe a little bit of a wet floor. Thorner finds Aronson. Aronson goes up. Good pass to Bernstein who loses it. Now here come the pride with Kevin Schenk. And Schenk's pass is going to go straight out of bounds. Frustration there from Schenk. The Jumbos have actually also done a great job of breaking down this press. It's been good passing so far by them. They're able to just kind of get around, just like that, and they're already done. Aaronson will dribble in. Foul's going to be called against Dominic Dunn. It's going to be his fourth. Inbound is to Cohen. Henry It's going to be fouled now by Kenny Lewis. And he'll go to the line shooting one and one. Henry's first is good. Second is up, and it's also good. Theo Henry now has nine. Bright to Dunn. 
Dunn steps back and fades, and it's wow. good. Wow. What a shot by Dunn. Immediate time, or excuse me, immediate timeout after the three-pointer made from Dominic Dunn. And again, it's a 10-point lead for Tufts, trying to close this one out. Tufts this entire game, even though you look at the stats, even though Tufts does have four more fouls than Widener, you can't help but feel that Tufts would have been much more better off in this game and maybe would be up by more than 10 if they could just keep the fouling down to a minimum. There were some points where I'd look up at the scoreboard and I would see that they had eight fouls to when Widener only had one. Now, that's okay because they're, they're probably going to end up winning this game with a little bit less than two minutes left up 10. But if you want to keep going far in this tournament, you have to knock off how many fouls you have, especially late in games. Theo Henry is going to be fouled by Pat Holden, and he'll head to the line, still shooting one and one. Henry's first is good. He now has double digits in this game with 10. Henry's second is also good. Sounds like we have a Widener fan in the stands. Holden fades, gets it to go. Yeah, they will just not go away. Aronson, inbound to Henry, bounce to Thorner, and now Tyler Aronson will go to the line. With that foul, Dominic Dunn. We'll have to check out because that was his fifth. He had 13 points tonight. Checking in number three, Luke Major. Aronson's first from the line is in and out. And here come Widener with Pat Holden. Now to Missouri. And we're going to get an offensive foul. I believe that was an illegal screen against number 14, Pat Holden. That's a backbreaker. Inbound is going to go into Theo Henry. He's going to be fouled by Miles Bryant, or excuse me, Bright. This will be two shots from Theo Henry. First is good. Giving Tufts a 11 point lead with 120 remaining in the game. Henry's second is up and it's good. Bounce Missouri, catch and shoot, short. Gets his own rebound swing. Holden drives to in the lane. Lewis goes up and will go to the line. Tough foul number 22, Casey McLaren. That's his fourth. Team's over the limit. Tough 
Lewis's first is good. McLaren will now have a seat and as Cohen checks in for him. Lewis's second is good as well. He now has 16 points and 11 rebounds for the Pride. And Aronson's going to be called for a travel. Good defense there from the Pride to double team and get Aronson to turn the ball over. Got to get an open three here, maybe a nice easy three. And they turn it over, give it to Aronson. Miscommunication between Holden and I believe he, it, Matlack. And Tufts is going to have the opportunity to waste some more time as this game is now under a minute. Winder's going to elect to send Theo Henry back to the line. Partner foul number three, Luke Major to second. Team's over the limit. Henry's first is good. And a standing ovation for a couple of guys that came out of the game for Widener in Pat Holden and Kenny Lewis who have been outstanding not only today for the Pride but all season. Kenny Lewis had a double-double today. Probably has been the best player on this Widener team with 16 and 13 and then Holden has made a couple of free throws down the stretch, a couple of threes in the first half. And has been a great leader for this team. Steel Henry yet again is going to go to the line. Henry's first is good. We'll see Chris Bortz checking into the game for Tufts. And Theo Henry now 10 for 10 from the line. Ernest. 17 kick. points tonight for Theo Henry. It's impressive. A nice baseline jumper there from Bright. And Henry's going to be fouled again. Denise telling him, like, guys, I'm 10 for 10. <laughs> Why don't you try fouling someone else? Maybe you can even foul them off the ball. You can still send them to the, to the line. It's going to be Miles Bright's. Fifth foul, and he'll have to take a seat. Checking him for the tie, number 24, Sean Mazzoni. Henry's first is good. Second is good as well. Wow. 19 points, 12 for 12 from the free throw line tonight for Theo Henry. Missouri fires for three. No good. Rebound Tufts. We're just going to dribble this one out, it looks like. The Tufts University is able to get the job done here today in the first round. And they'll continue their journey towards the ultimate goal. They win this one, 78 to 66. Make sure to join us back here. That's 5:34. The second of two games we have here today. 
This one featuring the Keaton State College Owls and the Baruch Bearcats. We will see you then. You have been watching a Keen State Athletics broadcast on the Owls Media Network. Please tune in to our next broadcast and thank you for watching.